learn about my vaginoplasty when I was 11. On the last episode, part three, I talked about the clitorectomy I had, which I was four when that happened. And the clitorectomy was completely medically unnecessary. It's something that still happens today to children and it was an assault of my human rights and my bodily integrity. And that was when I was four, but another surgery happened to me and that's what this video is about. It's about a vaginoplasty that happened to me when I was 11, about 11 years old. So stay tuned and we're gonna talk about that surgery coming up next. As an intersex person, my body is non-binary. And binary just simply means two opposite opposing categories that are supposedly completely different. In terms of this conversation, I'm talking about sex. So my body did not fall into either one of these opposing categories of male or female. It had some male characteristics and it had some female characteristics and then it had its own intersex characteristics. So when doctors found that out, they decided that it would be best to intervene and make my body fit into one of these boxes and they chose the female box and they decided to do surgeries and force me to go on feminizing hormones that would make my body more normal. Doctors unfortunately get taught medicine in this way that says if something is abnormal, it's your job to make it normal. Unfortunately, intersex people who are generally healthy get casted into this completely subjective definition of abnormal. And so thus for almost 100 years- Dr. Money, it's still a pretty drastic procedure, isn't it? Well, it's a drastic procedure by, procedure by your standards and mine. have been taking it upon themselves to quote unquote fix us and make us normal and they've been successful in getting parents to go along with their plans because in most parents hearts they want what's best for their children they want their children to be happy and in order for parents to believe that their children can be happy they often think that their children have to be normal and again normal is completely subjective but with that aside they want us to be normal and doctors are over here being like we can make your child normal. We can make them normal. Thus, we can make them be happy. And that is what happened to me. So my parents were told that I was abnormal and that these doctors had the fix for me and the third fix they had for me, vaginoplasty. So they decided my vagina wasn't long or wide enough to accept a male's penis. And they talked about a lot of saying like it wouldn't be able to have normal sex with my husband in the future and so they decided to go in and do a surgery now did they tell me the truth no they didn't tell me the truth what they told me was is that i had a bladder issue and that they were going to go in and fix my bladder and my urethra and right before the surgery they said we noticed your vagina is a little bit smaller than other girls and we can go in and make your vagina bigger so that when you have sex with your husband when you're older it'll be all good and they said, is that good? And I was like, sure, <laughs> okay, um, sounds good. I was literally in my gown, had been prepped for anesthesia, thought I was just going in for a bladder surgery. When I woke up from that surgery, I had tubes coming out of me, which was a catheter, and I had tons of stitches. And I was groggy from the anesthesia and threw up. It was disgusting. And then I thought I'd go home pretty soon and days and days and days go by and I'm still in the hospital and I still have my catheter in me and I, I would have teams of medical attending physicians and also their resident physicians and they would come into my room and they would say, hey, I have some medical students here. Is it okay if we allow them to come in with us? And I would say, because I wanted to be nice, I would say, okay. And then what they did next, I was, not prepared for they would spread open my legs and i was just wearing a hospital gown and they would look at the surgery site which was between my legs and they would show the residents in the room the students their handiwork what they had done to me and it was a vaginoplasty essentially 
And that was horrible. That moment, coupled with other moments, like in follow-ups, taught me something that has stuck with me. And it is that my body is not my own. That everyone else has access to my body. I don't have any say in that. My body is an object to be looked at, to be scrutinized, and to be surgically manipulated. And that is a horrible thing to learn as a young person. I was only 11. Um, and in those moments, in order to cope, what I did was I would go someplace in my head, I would freeze up, I would not breathe, um, I would hold my breath actually, and I would go somewhere else. I would try not to be present in that moment. I didn't want to be physically or emotionally there. Because to be there in that moment while people were looking at my most private parts was too much to deal with as an 11 year old. And I didn't feel strong enough or like I had enough power or autonomy or authority to say no, don't do this to me, leave me alone. And that had some lasting effects that were horrible. Eventually, I was able to leave the hospital and I was able to go home. And I remember they, ta they taught me how to take a warm bath. I remember I attempted to do that and when I was finally in the bathtub, I wanted to touch myself and feel the, the surgery site. I wanted to feel what it felt like after, after their surgery. And I remember slowly putting my hands down in between my legs and it felt very foreign, it felt very different, it felt very sharp and crispy because there were stitches and scarring, fresh wounds. And that made me feel sick. It, it, it put that sick feeling in my stomach where I immediately snatched my hand like out. And I was like, I don't want to touch myself ever again down there. Which is another lesson I was learning at that time, that my body was something to be ashamed of. That I didn't, I didn't have a sense of respect for my body because I felt like the people around me who were adults felt that there was something wrong with my body, something so wrong that they did these surgeries that left me feeling so icky and they would come in and look at me. And I felt that because of all of that, that there was something to be ashamed about. I internalized it and I became ashamed. And touching myself kind of confirmed that shame, that I was, I was really different. I was cut up, I was raw. I felt like a monster and it really messed me up. I went through a time when everybody else goes through Wow. I thought I just saw like a levitating beast. Okay, no demons. After that experience, I went through a time when others are going through puberty um, and went through my teenage years with this intense shame that came because of the stigma. The stigma that is associated with intersex people or people who are just non-binary and, and aren't normal. Um, even though they had not told me I was intersex at this point, they were still covering it up by saying I was born with cancer in my ovaries. I still felt the effects of that stigma and, and that, that kind of translated into intense feelings of shame. That's how I went through my teenage years. It's just feeling that horrible sense of shame and having nobody to talk about it with. And that led me to college. I got to college and it wasn't until my first year of college sitting in a psychology of women class and looking at a slide where the professor was talking actually about the intersex variation that I have that I found out I was intersex. Stay tuned for part five where I'm going to talk about what my journey after finding out I was intersex to today being an intersex educator college speaker, filmmaker, and activist. And remember, intersex stories, not surgeries.
Thank you.